Hey, hey, I'm Siobhan, and I love talking about all the things related to freedom and personal growth. And I'm on a journey to redefine freedom on my own terms as I become the woman I desire to be. Each week, I'll share in real time what I'm learning as I do my inner work while creating a safe space for my listeners to feel seen. If you desire to be free and live a life that feels good to you, then you're in the right place for beautiful conversations that's going to support you on your journey to freedom. Welcome to the Siobhan J. Middleton Podcast. Now let's start the show. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of my podcast. I'm your host, Siobhan, and as always, I'm so delighted that you are back again for another week. Y'all, today's episode is inspired by a TikTok that I saw this morning. Um, I was going in a completely different direction for this week, but when I saw this video, I was like, oh my God, I have to talk about this. And it was a promotion for Usher's Super Bowl performance that's coming up in 2024. And when I got to the last part of the TikTok, and I'm going to link to it in my show notes, it was Usher's future self talking to his younger self, and they used the audio from the intro to Confessions. And as I'm watching this, it starts to pull on my heartstrings and the tears are streaming down my face. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I want to talk about preparing for your future self. And then also, I've been wanting to talk about this book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, for a while. So this is going to tie in perfectly. I have watched this particular part of the TikTok at least four or five times at this point, and I know I'm going to keep going back. And I think about when the Confessions album came out in 2004. And 19 years later, well, it'll be 20 years because he's performing in 2024 at the Super Bowl. But anywho, the time frame of seeing something that I going to go out on a limb and say he probably didn't even dream of or ever thought that that version of himself, his younger self, would be performing at the Super Bowl. And if you're an Usher fan and you've known like a lot of the things that he's been through, his experiences, what we know from what the media shares anyway, I'm sure a lot of life has happened. And there may have been moments when he wanted to give up and quit. But to see his future self talking to his younger self, that is where I want to kind of focus on today. Because in that moment, I'm like, well, what would future Siobhan say to present day Siobhan? And I took a moment and I closed my eyes. I took some deep breaths. And again, my eyes started to fill with tears because I was really connecting to that version of myself. And sometimes in life, it can be so overwhelming. And I talked about in my newsletter last week and then also on Instagram about setting boundaries and the things we have to do in present day to prepare for our future self. It may not make sense right now. It may seem very challenging. I mean, the pain and everything that you have to go through. But when you think about the future version of yourself, will that version be proud of the steps that you're taking today? And as I had my eyes closed and I was thinking about my future self and what she would say to me today, what I imagine myself to be in the future is whole, is healed, more free, um, full, just of life, being so loved by everybody that I have chosen to be in my life at this point. I started thinking about the dreams that I have today and then the dreams that I haven't even dreamed of because I just haven't quite yet, right? And I want to be intentional with preparing for my future self. And what will that look like? And some of the things that came up for me as I was writing down the notes for this episode is that I have to live in the now. I have to be present in the now. 
I have to really take life in and live my life to the fullest because that's really all that we have, right? And then every single experience that I have, I know is a teachable moment, whether it's good, whether it's bad, or what have you. Every single experience that I am having is meant for me to learn something. And so I can hold on to the good and the beautiful things and continue to repeat that. And then the not so good things that happen in my life, what am I going to learn from that? And how am I going to shift and move in a different direction, right? Another thing as it relates to preparing for my future self is doing the healing work. And so again, I talk about all the time, like I'm in therapy and This type of therapy that I'm doing is very different. And I'm grateful that I'm finally working on myself because I'm able to heal in a way that I haven't before. And I know that my future self will be delighted that I am healing to prepare for her. And it doesn't feel good at all. And it takes time. So there's some parts of my healing journey, you know, it'll happen maybe a little bit quicker, but there's some parts, depending on the level of trauma, the level of pain, that's going to take some time. And that time could be months, years, but being okay with it and also continuing to do that work. And as it relates to the healing, there are parts of myself that are tender. And so practicing self-love and self-care and nurturing and nourishing those parts of me that need a little bit more love, that didn't get that love from my parents and learning how to reparent myself. And I know doing that work now is preparing for the future me so that I can be whole and complete and free and all of the things that I mentioned before. Preparing for my future self also means that I have to keep dreaming, dreaming big dreams and living out the vision that I have for my life to stay connected with what I feel I'm here to do, which is to be a light and empower others to be free and living in that truth, in that purpose and allowing whatever it is I'm supposed to do on a bigger level, trusting what I feel and leaning into that. Like my dreams look very different now because of where I'm at in my life. There's some dreams that are still there, like that I want to fulfill in my life, but then I'm giving myself space to dream new dreams, which I did an episode about that a few months ago. And leaning into it and what are the steps that I need to take in order for my dreams to manifest, you know? I think the other thing here is to trust that I know what's best for me. And trusting myself in this season of my life looks very different than before. Um, It requires me to be vulnerable It requires me to slow down, to rest, to be silent so I can hear what's going on on the inside and understanding that, again, I know what's best for me. And as long as I trust myself and my intuition, I will be fine. Now, will I make mistakes? Will I fumble? Absolutely. But also knowing that there is a lesson in every single experience that I'm having. The last part as it relates to preparing for my future self is that I have to love on myself deeply. And that requires me to not disappoint myself to please others. That requires me to set healthy boundaries. That requires me to not abandon myself to please others. And I will say that takes deep, deep, deep work. 
And I'm noticing the more that I'm tending to myself, the more self-aware I'm becoming and I can self-correct in real time. There's some things that I miss and I'm not going to get it till it's time for me to get it. But when I do get it, noticing what I notice and move forward accordingly. And these are just the top things that came to my mind as it relates to how do I want to prepare for my future self? What would I want my future self to say to me right now? And I think that's something that I'm going to try to think about often so that as I'm moving through life, would my future self be proud of the steps that I'm taking today? Would she say, hey, uh -uh, that ain't it. (laughs) That's not the right person. That's not the right opportunity. Don't do that. Do this. And then making sure that I am connected enough with myself to listen to what I hear on the inside, a.k.a. listen to my intuition. So I mentioned in the beginning of the episode that as I was watching the advertisement or promotion for Usher's Super Bowl performance, it reminded me of the book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie Ware. And this is a book that I recommend every single person in the world reads. (laughs) It is in my top five favorite books of all time. That whenever someone asks me what book should I read, I'm going to say this book, along with a couple of others that I'll link to my Amazon store in the show notes that you can check out. And just a little bit about this book before I share what the regrets are. It's about this caretaker who cares for people in their dying days. And there were some common regrets that people had on their deathbed. And so she chose to share those regrets with her audience. And when I tell you, my friend and I read this book, I believe last year, if I'm not mistaken. And we had a book club that we were doing and we would read and then we would talk about it. And the book was so inspiring to me. And it's like, this is how I want to live my life. Because I don't want to live a life of regret. I don't want to get to my final days and my future self not be proud. You know, like I really want to live a life with intention. And so I consider this book a gift. And I'm going to share the regrets with you. And I'm going to share a few of my favorite quotes from each chapter. And again, I will link to the book in the show notes. The first regret is, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself. So from that particular chapter, this is the part that I want to share with you. The pain I had accepted from others had been their own suffering projected onto me. Happy people don't treat other people that way, nor do they judge others for living a life true to his or herself. If anything, they respect it. Recognizing the pain carried into my generation from previous ones, I had the choice to break free of it in my own life. I was never going to be able to control another and had no desire to. People change because they want to and when they are ready. And then the other section I want to read to you, it says, it was time to do things differently. It was time to choose a different way, to speak up and say enough. I wasn't willing to tolerate the same patterns anymore. Even if it turned out lonelier for me, at least it could lead to peace. The other path certainly wouldn't. So my takeaways from that is to find your truth and live for yourself. You want to live a life that feels good to you inside and out. And I know this is easier said than done, but really it is the only way to live, to live in your truth, to who you are, and don't live a life where you're people-pleasing and taking care of other people and disappointing yourself. Regret number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And the quote I want to share with you says, we spend so much time making plans for the future, often depending on things happening at a later date to assure our happiness or assuming we have all the time in the world when all we ever have is our life today. 
And then this quote really brings it home. It says, don't create a life where you'll regret working too hard. And I want you to think about this because obviously we have to work, we have to take care of ourselves, our families, et cetera. But what is it about working that it has to be hard, right? I think when we find the thing that we want to do, when we discover what makes our heart sing, what brings us joy, then work wouldn't have to be so hard. And I don't want to get to the end of my life and I'm doing all this work and I'm hustling and grinding, which I don't like those terms. And I didn't enjoy my life. And so my takeaway from that is to get curious about what brings me joy. And I've shared this on the podcast before when I did some soul searching and I was journaling and I was like, well, what is it that you would do for the rest of your life and that you love doing? And it's talking. I love sharing. I love inspiring others and sharing my story and how I'm living my life to be empowering to the next person. I want to talk about freedom and I'm going to talk about freedom for probably the rest of my life because it's my number one value and it's it's what I'm desiring most and it's the work that I'm doing to be free, you know? And it's when I think about this work, this isn't hard work and creating a life that feels good is more important than working so hard and then getting to my end of the life, end of my life, and then regretting it. So I think we have to find what brings us joy, what fills our cup, what fulfills us. And yes, there are some things that you may have to do that you don't want to do, but the ultimate goal is to do work that makes you feel alive. The next regret is, I wish I had the courage to express my feelings. And here's the quote, we need to be brave enough to express our feelings. We must learn to express our feelings now. Tell people you love them. Tell them you appreciate them. If they can't accept your honesty or react in a different way to how you hope, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have told them. It takes courage to express your feelings, particularly if you're not doing okay and need assistance, or if you've never expressed honest feelings to someone you love and don't know how it will be received. But the more you practice sharing your feelings, whatever they are, the better things become. Pride is such a waste of time. We are all human. We are allowed to be vulnerable too. It is a part of the process. And then the last quote I want to share from this chapter is, we should never feel guilty for expressing our feelings and we should never make someone else feel guilty if they have found the courage to do so. And I think as it relates to feelings, I would just say over the last several years, I'm just starting to connect with my feelings. And one of the things that I want to be intentional about is expressing my truest feelings and not, as the book said, being too prideful. It is not easy to do that. But as she mentioned, the more that we practice it, the easier that it becomes. Let people know how you feel. Express your concerns and know that it's better for you in the end to express what you're feeling versus holding those feelings on the inside and then that person never knows how you feel, you know? The next regret is, I wish I stayed in touch with my friends. And the quote I'm going to share with you says, don't lose touch with the friends you value most. Those who accept you as you are and who know you very well are worth more than anything in the end. Don't let life get in the way. Just always know where to find them and let them know you appreciate them in the meantime. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable either. And here's the other quote. Women value friendships in a stronger way emotionally. Their friendships grow closer with a lot of talk about emotional things. Men need friendships for talking too, he said. But they do this best when they are doing things together, like playing tennis, cycling, or doing something active. Men enjoy friendships where they can work things out, resolve problems, whether physical or emotional, and this often happens best when they are active. I wanted to share that quote in particular for my male listeners because women, we have so many outlets to process our feelings 
and talk about things and we're naturally more emotional than men. But men also need healthy friendships. They need outlets where they can just have conversations. And typically it happens, like the book says, when they're being more active, like at the gym or, you know, something like that. But men, find your spaces. Even if that's just one friend, make sure you have someone you can talk to and release and share and express yourself. And keep your friends close and make sure that you're consciously choosing the right people to have in your life and be intentional with, you know, how you show up for your friends as well because everybody needs someone. We all want to feel like we belong. And I know it's not common for men to be connected with their feelings and their emotions based on society and our culture and family and all of that stuff, but you still have them. And I don't want you to have everything bottled up inside and you don't have a space to release that. So just something I want you to consider. And then the last regret is, I wish I would have let myself be happier. This is the quote I want to share with you. Choosing happiness became a daily thing, a new habit to integrate into my thinking. Developing the habit of choosing happiness where possible, focusing more consciously on blessings, certainly saw my life heading in a better direction. Every day is a gift now. Every day was always a gift, but it is only now I have slowed down enough to truly see the huge amount of beauty each day offers. We take so much for granted. She goes on to say, she had come to see what a powerful force gratitude is. It is too easy to always want more from life, she said, and that's fine to a degree since expanding who we are is a part of dreaming and growing. But as we will never have everything we want and will always be growing, appreciating what we already have along the way is the most important thing. Life goes fast, she stated, whether you live into your 20s, 40s, or 80s. Every day in itself is a gift and a blessing. It is all we have ever, anyway, the moment we are in. And then the last quote I'm going to share with you is, don't hang around with dying people forever. Let some joy back in. And when I think about that quote, you think about the people that you are surrounded by. I talk about the 95% all the time. The 95% of the people that you are surrounded by will determine your success or your failure. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that quote comes from the book, um, We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. But again, the quote from this particular book, don't hang around with dying people forever. Let some joy back in. And I want you to look around your life and the people that are dying, right, metaphorically, where they're not living a life that you desire. They're not showing up in a way that you want to show up for yourself. And so they are dying going through this going through life, just existing through the motions. And if you continue to stay connected and surrounded by people who are dying, how will you let the joy in? You will become like the people that you spend the most time with. And so when I think about my future self and I share parts of this book with you because I don't want to live my life of regret. I want my future self to be proud And the only way that my future self can be proud is, will be based on the choices that I make today, tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. And I want you to think about that for your life. Like when we go back to the video with Usher, he's performing at the Super Bowl 20 years later from when he made the Confessions album. 20 years later, and I want you to think about one year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, how do you want your future to look? Are you happy with the choices you're making today? Would that relationship be beneficial for for your future self? Would that job be beneficial for your future self? If not, you get to change your mind. So at the end of the video, Usher's future self says to his younger self, I need you to get ready. 
And that's what I want for you. I want you to get ready for your future self. I want you to do the work. I want you to figure out what the work is and show up for yourself. And I think about for myself where I was this time last year, and I could not imagine being here. But this version of myself is so proud of the version of myself last year that did the hard thing to get here. And when I think about where I was three years ago, this version of myself is so proud of the woman I was back then that I was able to take the steps forward. And so the same thing now, this version of myself, my future self will be proud of because I'm doing it. And I don't have all the answers, you know, I make mistakes and I fumble, but I'm proud. You know, I'm proud of myself. So I would love to hear from you. Um, You can always shoot me an email. You can DM me on the gram. Many of you do that. And let me know how this episode resonated with you. And if anything that I said has been inspiring, that has moved you in any way, I would love for you to treat me to a cup of coffee or two or three or four. Um, That link is in the show notes. I appreciate every single week someone treats me to coffee and it just warms all the pieces of my heart. And that's a beautiful way to support my work and what I'm doing. And then also be sure to subscribe to my newsletter where it is a beautiful compliment to the podcast. And you can become a free subscriber where you get my weekly newsletter every week. And then you can also become a paid subscriber where you'll get additional resources and content from yours truly And all of that will be found in the link in the show notes. Lastly, share, share, share this episode with a friend. Send them the link and say, hey, take a listen and let me know your thoughts. Let's have a conversation about it. Share it on social media. I'm on Instagram. You can tag me. My link is in the show notes as well. But share, share, share this episode, especially if you were inspired And then please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with some feedback about what you think of the podcast. That is so helpful um, with getting the word out about what I'm doing and more people will be able to be inspired to be free just like you. And I believe there's somewhere on Spotify, I got to figure this out, that you can leave comments as well. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast so you never miss an episode. Sending you so much love and light until next time.